Hi there everyone, this is Kimberly Knox, KK, your astrologer, and welcome to my YouTube channel for all of you returning subscribers. Thank you for allowing me to share my passion with you, share knowledge, and share time with you. And for all of you new viewers, I hope that you do subscribe so that you're able to find when I'm coming out with my new videos. This is a special content, and this content is all derived from a summer romance workshop that I prepared because no better time than the summer to feel good, look good, revamp your sex life, get your relationship going, get out there, have you know great uh, dating time, and, and really rev things up. So we're gonna be talking about harnessing your magnetic energy, gaining insight into your attraction. We're gonna be talking, I'm gonna be going over the Venus cycle and kind of updating you because some very important connections between the all important uh, Venus eclipse that we had in June 2012, how that's laying out. And Venus is our sister planet here on Earth and she has a big message for us always. What she's doing is, and, and, she, and she's close to us, so she's delivering messages about love and money and attraction and, and um, and cutting kind of all of the good things in life and how to sustain our planet as well because Venus, ruler of Taurus, Taurus, the ruler of Earth, is a ruler of the ground, is a ruler of nature, it's a ruler of everything that sustains us here. It's also the ruler of Libra, which is relationships, socializing, cooperation, diplomacy, getting along with others. So relationships are everything. And uh, we're gonna be giving you the best romance and date nights so that you can plan, get your journal out, plan. So this is the third time I've done this video. And I'm sorry, the first time, there's something wrong with the, with the, um, the volume, but I am determined. So uh, the first time you could see out to Sarasota Bay here, it's amazing, out into the bay, over to Longboat Key. It's just absolutely stunning. And what a wonderful space to do creative work. And I just wanted to share that with you. So uh, we're going to be also uh, grabbing a heart here. I do these um, hearts for everyone I have for a very long time and we get little messages from that. I have roses here, I love roses. Roses, here's a little tip. Cut yourself two roses, put them in a beautiful vase next to your bed. This will enhance your romance next to rose quartz little things like this, just little symbols. It's all part of Feng Shui and energy. Feng Shui is amazing, by the way. But um, it's a little nice things that you can do, adding beauty and love into your environment. And um, I just love the roses from Fresh Market. They're terrific. So, Venus. Okay, when you were born, there's this whole the sky. Now, I've talked about this before, your natal chart. It is a snapshot of the mathematical compilation of the sky at the exact moment you were born. Well, you're not just a sun sign. You hear people say all the time, does Gemini go with um, Libra? Does, um, does Leo match with Capricorn? I mean, like, okay, they actually do, and they actually can. Every sign can get together. It's, it's all a matter of, of you know, this, there's so much, like within your chart and you're attracting. So your, your moon and your Venus, these are personal planets. Your moon is what you emotionally need. And for man, it's the female, it's the woman, it's his mother. So uh, these things are important for his emotional connection. And then Venus is what he is attracted to. So what he wants, if what he wants and what he needs are totally different, you got yourself a dichotomy okay so there's this thing going on where you got to have it sorted out so that you can rise the level of the vib vibration just like if Pluto is a relationship uh, accent for you it's a relationship planet meaning you know when you do your synod not that you know when you do a relationship reading for someone there's there's things that show what you're attracting well Pluto's not is not easy but you can attract a high level of Pluto, and it's fantastic. Pluto is the healer, the transformer, the 
the spiritual shaman, uh, you know, many different things. So, so let's get with it here. So this guy is the storyboard. So your wants, your needs, your desires, all this is communicated in your own story, in your own chart. Your relationships are in your chart. Now, of course, you have things that happen that build up from past relationships and things that you saw going on, the dynamics of your parents, which is also in your chart. Um, you can see that. And if you haven't gotten over the past and you keep bringing things forward, you're going to contaminate every relationship that you get into. So it's so important to take some time for yourself, get things sorted out. And when you recognize something is toxic, to be able to let it go, like create safe boundaries for yourself, for this new container of love and relationship that you're, that you're creating in a new area with someone new or with, with something new. So what's happening? your love weather your love weather is in your chart we're going to be talking about the love weather coming up all this summer so you can plan some dates and what's going on last summer was incredible you know we had venus retrograde but we had venus meeting with jupiter and we had saturn back in scorpio i'm going to tell you what all that means we were really cleaning up and connecting at this deep passionate level and now we're really trying we're actually at a point where we're seeing stuff come to life but we still have those toxic things that perhaps we haven't gotten rid of so that we can go forward clean and beautiful so what if you had this plan to clean up and improve to up up regulate your your love life your current relationship or if you're getting back out into the dating scene it's so important not to keep feeding yourself from the buffet line so that the love you steal will never stay the love you create from within is a love that will always be there but you're, if you're creating this foundation it's not about just stuffing that doesn't stay and then you can get panicked so you just keep buying things buying clothes buying this buying that that's not that is a dysfunctional venus okay so we learn about those things so that we can pinpoint them and um no matter, listen relationships are a mirror to yourself they're a mirror this is this magnetic energy this is what we come here to understand so so what if you had a plan and you you stopped the mistakes because you took some time for yourself to discover what those are that's what I do in relationship coaching and, and in a relationship consultation between you and a partner or just you. We just look at all that. Venus readings are incredible. They're incredible for women. I love doing them for women, especially because Venus is your magnetic power as a woman. It's your feminine energy and how you use that. So this empowered you know, feminine energy is extremely important. For a man, it's important to understand as well, but you can help, um, you know, by understanding your, your significant other's uh, personal planets as well. So love and fear, closely related. If you need to keep your heart open. Now, that's not easy if you have past things going on, but an open heart can receive a closed heart keeps testing and and then they wonder why things fall apart so you can't squeeze a lemon and get anything but lemon juice so if you want to attract love you have to become love you have to fill up you have to be love but you give love in different ways depending on your own chart but you still have to fill up yourself no one fills up love for you no one makes you happy no relationships bring you this so this is what you have to do. What lies behind, what lies in front of you is nothing compared to what lies within you. So what lies within you, you're responsible for. You are responsible for your own happiness. And you must be a guide and uh, you know a, a model for your children in this way as well. So the more that you do for yourself, the more everyone around you benefits. And if you're having troubles, in anything go 
meditation, connection, uh, getting connected with nature, voicing things to, to the universe, that actually extremely really helps. Whether you want to call it God or the universe, either or, um, whatever you do, voicing that connection is, is phenomenal. So, so just understand it's the love that you build and we are building. So let's stop the mistakes and let's take some time to take a look at this and start to understanding. If you're not getting what you want, then you have a dysfunctional Venus. If you're not getting what you want, it's because of you. You show up everywhere you go. So what is going on? You have to start to understand that because awareness, awareness, this deep awareness is the first step to wisdom. And I think Aristotle said something like that. Um, but that is the start here. Knowledge, truth, wisdom. So what was Robert Graham? Is he like a Sagittarius? I'm not sure, but I, I love I love his whole spin on everything because that's true. So Venus is what you want, and if you're not getting what you want, something's wrong, understand that, but you can fix it. Okay, this Venus by sign. Okay, Venus, the planets are energy. Venus is the energy to attract, it's manifestation to attract, to bring goodies to you as the power of attraction, the power of manifestation, and the, uh, your sense of value, your deep sense of value. So by signs, signs are characteristics, it shows you the way in which you bestow harmony and beauty and peace around you. It's the style which you attract people to you. The possessions that you have and that you love and it's your, your aesthetic style and your artistic expression and it's your approach, your approach to partnering, courtship, cooperation, all of this because then again it's the ruler of Libra. So dysfunctionally, you want to just, if there's something dysfunctional, you want to turn up that higher vibration of your sign. So understanding that is, <clears throat> is brilliant in that regard. So I just want to read you a little bit of something. Um, this is from a, the bigger Venus workshop that I do and taken from, listen, Jeffrey Green is incredible. His work uh, at a more esoteric level any, any uh, psychiatrist really needs to look into this deeper. If they have an interest, it would really help them. The soul's evolution through, um, through astrology and uh, Jeffrey Green's incredible with that. But Venus, the planet itself, if you, if you understood the mathematics behind Venus, you will just understand that it embodies nature and beauty itself. It creates a five-pointed star and it's and its involvement between sun and earth. And <clears throat> this is a, a whole different type of uh, lecture, but it's, it's just incredible when you start to really understand that Venus is the giver of life. And so between the sun, Venus and earth, this is what we, this is how we, we keep, we keep going. We, we keep evolving and we, we, you know, we save ourselves. It's a planet of love, beauty, harmony. You see self-esteem, partnerships, cooperation. It's all the good things in life, everything that we love, everything that we want, and it is our money. So it's attraction of, of, you know, being in gratitude for what you have. And speaking of abundant terms brings you more abundance too. So what are you attracting? You're not getting what you want. Um, it's success starts in the knowing. So that's what I said, this deeper self-knowledge. If you're not getting what you want, something is missing. Something inside you needs to be upgraded. And that's okay. It's just about the knowing. Venus is tangible. Self-worth always needs a measure because you need something to show. Understand that. Self-worth needs a measure. You need to know that somebody wants what you have. Listen, that's why we go to work. That's why we expand our talents and we share our talents with the world. Whether that is in exchange for money or not, it doesn't matter. You need to exchange your talents. So that is why somebody who <clears throat> never leaves the home, if they're not rewarded for what they do in the home in some way, that becomes, they might be feeling that they're lacking something there. So everybody has, a, that's why just, Everyone in your home, appreciation, attention, and affection is important. Make other people around you, the most important people, feel 
needed and feel a special and important. People want to feel important, okay? So inwardly, it is how we inwardly relate to ourselves. It is our inner talk. It's our inner self-talk. If there is bad self-talk going on, something's going on with self-esteem, and that could have to do with second house stuff. It could have to do with Saturn stuff, but it's Venus as well. So it's essentially our needs and how we project them um, and attract people and experiences and all the relationships that we do. Venus in our chart describes our inner vibrations, just like I said, magnetism attracts others to us. And <clears throat> because they reflect or they symbolize our own self relationship. So if we're having a bad relationship with ourselves, we're going to attract someone that that needs that same experience. They're mirrors. And that's why we attract a lot of polarities to us. In fact, while we're talking about polarity, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, they've been in the news forever since they got up together, but they had strong, huge polarity. If you look at her 28 degrees rising cancer, she's got Venus right there, and his cancer, I mean, and his Venus is exactly opposite, pretty much at 23 degrees of Capricorn. They both have their rulers. He's He's Sag rising, <clears throat> and her moon is conjunct Jupiter, which is kind of like Sagittarius in a way. And excuse me here. Both of their rising rulers are uh, in the sassy, courageous, independent sign of Aries, so they understand each other that way. And their suns are opposite as well. You'll see these polarities so much when, well, I see them all the time when I do synergy charts. But um, you definitely want to have a good moon connection. So these are different types of consultations that you can get and we can look at. <clears throat> so for women, this is your erotic attributes. This is the type of men that you want to share okay, with. And men, this is the type of woman that turns you on and what type of attributes does she possess that allow you to express your feminine side. So relationships are the most important and the most difficult because it's a, it's a blend of giving and receiving and giving and receiving and getting what you want and the other person getting what they want and learning to talk about it. And everything we learn and understand is from polarity. The polarity that I was just talking about as an example just between Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. It's not necessarily get over the chemistry stuff. Do we have chemistry? Okay, chemistry can just be Mars. Mars has nothing to do with a long-term standing relationship unless you have some other things that will hold you for the long term. In fact, when you feel all nervous and with this, it's, it's the relationship that comes in that calms you, that settles you, that grounds you, that holds you into this foundation. And if you're the type of person that constantly needs challenge and and something different there might just be something inside of you that doesn't want you that you are not wanting to allow to have something beautiful to develop so these are things to look at as well <clears throat> so by working on yourself you're able to upgrade and change the people love the experiences the money everything that brings into our life so uh, just understand that relationships are mirrors. So by having to address your polarities, you'll kind of understand the people that you attract and why. So it rules two signs, Taurus. Taurus is all about our self-esteem, our self-worth. And if we don't have that together within our boundaries and, and clarity about who we are and what we stand for, then we could fall for anything, right? you'll just attract anything. You'll just take anything that comes in. But if you are solid in that, then then Libra, the opposite sign, or the opposite sign that Venus rules, this is about relationships and going out there relating, diplomacy, cooperation with others, getting along with others, and our relationships, and those will be more healthy. Okay, so Venus's job is to is to take action to help us develop our value and also to attract, to attract what we want. The sign of Venus is in shows the planetary energy you need to operate to be successful and what vibrations you're operating out of. So I can't go through the entire thing, but I'm going to give you a snippet of what Venus 
type uh, chart readings are all about. So um, specifically Venus in Aries. It's a little difficult for a woman and it, there's, there's a lot of sexuality that ends up being involved in it, independence, um, a little more drama than, uh, <clears throat> but uh, so anyway, Venus in Aries, Venus conjunct Mars can be similar to that. Impulsive, pioneering, competitive, courageous, bold, independent, quick tempered, this me first kind of selfish um, energy is emitting strong pheromones. This is Mars energy. Ladies, so ladies approach to love is impulsive and ardent and coming on with a strong, like passionate sexual vibration. And <clears throat> the heart responds quickly. The women are attracted to self-reliant men who have a strong sense of purpose and purpose in life. Somebody who is that kind of Aries type of a man. Um, she'll generally attract, if it's too strong, the Libra, the one that will just do anything that you, you know, okay, whatever you say, because they, they just want, um, they, they want to be liked. So they need to stand up for themselves with assertiveness. This is that polarity. Men with Venus in uh, Aries, they prefer an energetic, ag, uh, you know, adventurous type of woman who's independent. She has this aura of self, uh, self-assurance and independence and, um, they need to guard against love being just uh, impetuous action and, and being overly narcissistic. Narcissism is a whole different story, but um, so men, if your Venus is in dichotomy with your moon, what you want and what you need are different. So the type you could be chasing different things but need something else so it's really great to understand this and bring it into some type of balance so that you're able to attract someone that embodies both of those things but not to the extremes that will cause drama and breakup in relationships and disappointment and and whatever else the negative aspects of Venus are. So you need to know that you're an independent entity and that you can function on your own and sometimes they they feel like they can get lost in a relationship, so they continually push for their own independence. So, and they attract through this um, sexual, strong sen sexual uh, nature. Well, what they need to do is understand the other person. They need to go to the embracing Libra portion. This is where you encourage others. Others, and not just pushing your own agenda, uh, encourage others ability to do what they want to do, to be who they are, to have their own assertiveness. So <clears throat> you, you may attract someone and say that they're selfish, but it may be that you're selfish. So, you know, this whole thing. Um, and we'll just go into Venus and Taurus real quick. Venus and Taurus. Venus is happy in Taurus. People love look, being in Taurus. It's good food. It's good. It's good wine. It's nature. It's, um, you know, it's, um, it's your finances, it's possessions that you like. So Venus in Taurus is very affectionate. This is about massage and body oil, sensual pleasures. Um, they like comfort and domestic life, nature. And they, so this, this can bring on the stubborn, possessive, jealous type of attraction because you hold on to what is yours, this possessive side of you. And um, so the women, very practical, passionate, natural, and sensual. They like a man who's financially secure. And they have, uh, they have a love of nature, like herbs and cooking and touch and massage. And she's very in touch with her own feminine goddess kind of nature. Men are attracted to a woman that is sensual and they're very affectionate to his physical needs. And they can create this loving home, stable, stable. They like someone stable, this home environment, someone that you can count on, that's loyal and that's committed, and uh, that has a strong sexual expression. So that's just two, but um, and well, and then to understand the opposite because they can um, they can get caught up too much in their maintaining uh, their possessions, and it's too difficult for them to let go of anything that hasn't held any meaning to them. Um, <clears throat> and their intimate relationships can be highly possessive. And they all track that because there's this fear of loss. So you embrace the Scorpio part.
So it's a learning to observe others and to objectively identify what motives they have and um, allowing the values of others and what they want not only to possess and control or limit their own development. So it's kind of understanding this give and take and what um, others' needs are. So these are just some of the deeper things here along with the Venus. Now, I just want to touch on, I told you about the um, this whole thing about the Venus cycles and they're amazing. If you want to get um, The Light of Venus by Adam Gainsbourg, if you have an interest in Venus, you'll just be thrilled. This is going to be a little bit of a longer video, but this is important. So June 5th, 2012. I can't see too well. Either way, I guess. <laughs> um, there was this rare Venus eclipse. June 5th, 15 degrees of Gemini. This is when Sun, Venus, Mars aligned. The Mayans knew this. This is why the calendar kind of was at the 12, 12, 12. It wasn't that everything was coming to an end. That's not it at all. There was this, there was this uplifting of, of energy and there was other planetary things going on too to help us to understand what we needed to save the planet. But Gem it only happens in Gemini and Sag, by the way. Similar to Mars, which only happens in Taurus or Scorpio. So these messages have to do with communication is Gemini, getting it out there, communicating. We have endless, endless ability to communicate. I know when this was starting, I got my first iPad and I started doing lectures, well, um, uploading uh, <clears throat> my different PowerPoints and, and bringing it to the lecture place back in 2012. So. And now there's everything. There's there's video on Facebook. There's now um, what on Amazon. There's something as well. So there's so many ways to communicate now and get your message out there, but also to speak to to communicate to others in loving ways and and um, new technology. So that's all involved there. So in that whole phase, excuse me. <laughs> um, November 1st of 2013 was an important time. The heart chakra was being set off. We also had this wholeness, and this is when we have actualization of what was happening at that time. So by November 1st, 2013, 25 degrees of Sag Sagittarius was being set off. This is where this wholeness Venus was at the time. This is at the galactic center. There's a so much energy around this. So around that time, especially if you were a Scorpio, born around that time, huge stuff going on for you. And uh, of course we had Saturn going through Scorpio at that time, really dredging up um, you know, all of this stuff and having us to start to look at things that are in life that have outgrown, that are toxic and they were no good and start to having them shove their way out. But we're still not done because Mars is back in Scorpio now and it's going to go direct on Thursday and it's going to be there till August the 2nd so we're still dealing with the issues specifically the issues of last summer but still all of the stuff that was going on since November uh, October the beginning of October 2012 and all that kind of set itself off retrogrades happened again after that so in January the end of um, December January 2014 we've got Capricorn now so Venus expression in Capricorn was about getting rid building for the long term this solid foundation that can last that you can that can support you getting rid of superficial superficial attachments things that are not real, people that are holding on for the wrong reasons, or, you know, love should come from the heart. June 7th, 2015, last summer, was the wholeness, the actualization of all of that time, all right? And this was in, in uh, Venus was in Leo at this time, was it or was it not? Um, it was either Cancer or Leo, but... Uh, so we were actualizing that and then we had Venus go retrograde in Leo last summer. So we were connecting at this deeper, passionate, creative level. If you know Leo's creative, JLo's extremely creative and amazing and Madonna and 
so many other Leos, but Leo came here to create, Virgo came to edit their creations, all right? They're brilliant at that, but Leos just want to expand and create and, and come from the heart and speak from the heart and show love and be love, and that is what love is about. Retrograde, this message to connect with everything. Summer 2015, we had Saturn, 90 days, back in Scorpio, dredging up in our face what needed to leave. Okay, we did a lot of work. We're not done yet. <clears throat> Venus met with Jupiter throughout the summer. Three times we met with Jupiter in Leo, twice, and then again, at the end of October 2015, met with Jupiter again, and then Venus and Mars came together again at the beginning of November. That is what just unfolded with these last two full moons in May and the one we just had here in June in Sagittarius. Because whatever happens at the new moon, six months later is the full phase. Just like in the month, the new moon unfolds there, but on a bigger phase. So it took us all this time, but now we've, we've got all around us stuff that was in our minds coming up from last summer and what we took energy and action to, uh, to bring forth is now unfolding. We've got Mars though, still doing work, looking at things. So it took two full moons, like I said, at one degree of Sagittarius back at the end of May, May 23rd and June 20th. Was it 21st? No, May 21st. <laughs> and this last one at 29 degrees, the 29th degree is, is the end of a situation. I mean, it's, it's literally, you, you need to get it. And <clears throat> about truth and standing up for your truth and knowledge and and just bringing this all to bloom. And so we are sitting at a brilliant part right now. And all of the planetary energy is just really helping us so that in the fall, September, the end of August, we actually have another eclipse. The eclipses are starting again. Mercury is gonna go retrograde, but things are happening at that time again. So we, we have to be clear and clean and sorted out this summer. And that's what it's helping us with. Venus has gone below the horizon. April the 18th, it sunk below the horizon. It did so <clears throat> in uh, the sign of Aries. And it was trying Sagittarius at that time. It was the same day that Pluto stationed to go retrograde. Big energy going on, deepened. We have to deepen this. On June 6th, Venus and the Sun came together. Superior conjunction, okay? The blessings, these are blessings. This is excitement, this is possibilities, and it came together at 15 degrees of Gemini. The exact same degree as the, the Venus eclipse that we had <clears throat> back in 2000, June 2012. So this is all connected to stuff that you started there. It's just more blossomed, more you, more authentic. If you are following your authentic self, you have something to show for it now. So all of these uh, things that have happened. Venus is going to rebirth, meaning it's gonna come into the evening sky. The evening sky is where she's mature because she's done all this work. And she is going to be in Leo at this time. And uh, just the, the weekend before that, we've got, we've got Mercury, Venus, and we've got um, Sun, We've got Sun Uranus. There's a lot of truth in speaking words of, of love and affection. And um, <clears throat> Venus, again, is going to trine Saturn. So this is a stable, this is a loyal. If you're born with Venus trine Saturn in any connection, it's a very loyal, stable, devoted type of energy. You've got five and a half months. And it's about personal transformation. And we have steps to... Just continue this path on upward until January the 13th, 2017, when we have reached wholeness. Venus is mature, and she is going to be shining bright, 10 degrees of Pisces, conjunct Neptune. When Venus conjoins with Neptune, it is your dream board. It is a time to just put out there whatever you, just, just divine, to the divine, what you would love to come together. 
we've got Venus unfolding <clears throat> and I'll tell you the days but this is your wishes actualized so this this is a really brilliant time a brilliant time for Pisces as well and for Virgos and and they've been very active because of the eclipses <clears throat> and then um, going forward on March the 4th you're gonna have Venus go retrograde in Aries and Aries says be you do it be yourself be your authentic self so it, you really are gonna have a lot together by that time to really go forward <clears throat> and shine I'm gonna pull a little heart for you because I've been doing this since June 2012 I make hearts for each of the signs or any lecture so these this is all regarding um, self-esteem money things like that so let's just pull a heart and see what we get I feed and nurture myself as a reflection of how I deserve to be treated that's one for you and number two for you is going to be this one I give generously to myself and to others as a reflection of my abundance money is a flow an ebb and flow I love these hearts so those are your messages to you just a little side note here <clears throat> if the Buddha dated it's incredible okay it's really more about the whole spiritual side of dating and partnership about being kind and loving and compassionate to others and understanding that you know the feeling of <clears throat> of being able to be who you are and being uh, being with someone that uplifts you into being more than you are and who challenges you through uh, the the love challenges that you might have or relationship challenges that you might have so let's talk about the hot dates for um, <clears throat> Venus because we want some date nights and this is when you're going to affirm your love with your partner or you're going to go out there and get dressed up there's a lot of hump days <laughs> I absolutely love that it's very funny Wednesdays are coming up really good so today and tomorrow all right Jupiter and Pluto are in trine right now this is really fantastic but on a bigger note moon and Neptune are together tonight this is dreamy this is movies that uh, it was trining Venus all day water signs you've got Pisces the moons in Pisces you got and 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 Venus has been in cancer uh, this the spa that I you know, that I went to today uh, seaside wellness spa here I, I actually adore them all and uh, they uh, they were busy all day the energy was flowing tremendously uh, so it continues tomorrow with family love and emotions because Venus is going to be trining Neptune reach out with emotions and feeling to those people that are closest to you that you care most about June 29th this is Wednesday this is a hump day Mars is going to move direct this is a very sexy hot desirable time and you've also got Venus opposing Pluto which is going to be full on June the 30th get out there you know get a little daring be a little sexy this is Scorpio energy and um, <clears throat> watch out for jealousy and things like that but this is about when you're really connecting with your deep desires and passions and that's important sensuality this continues all the way through the weekend so it's really a great time if you can go away Venus is going to be in a beautiful opportunity aspect with Jupiter that's always uplifting in great ways in July the 3rd you've got Sun in um, a flowing aspect with Neptune so this is this is a connection with um, the unseen and your and your your dreams and you know, things that you're you're bringing together that only you can see that haven't manifested yet that is the entrepreneur mind right there it's a Neptune an easy flow of emotions and in, in your dreams and then we have this new moon on July the 4th in the sign of cancer with the Sun and Venus there so this is brilliant and beautiful for family time and we've got July the 6th Wednesday hump day and July the 7th this is more exciting time here we've got Venus trine Mars this is the, the masculine and the feminine coming together this energies of two sign do something fun because Venus is going to be speaking with a um, <clears throat> with a first quarter square to Uranus and that means surprise it can be awakenings it could be a new direction but if you with a partner don't cause a separation just do something fun and different it could be a surprise kiss if you're single or if you're not but um, the Sun is also opposite Pluto too so watch for any power struggles but this is about um, <clears throat> the power to go and to transform yourself as well 
So go for passion around this time. July the 12th, Venus moves into the sign of Leo. So for Leos, Leo risings, uh, Aquarians, uh, this is a really good time for you. Aquarius, because Leo is your opposite sign, so when Venus is there, that enhances your relationships. This is big, bold love. This is like, see me. This is attention, affection, appreciation. Leos need that. They need to feel, they need the compliments. You know, they compliment others, and that's the way you deal with Venus and Leo, by the way. You want compliments. You want that attention. You want that. Instead of showing off, you know, maybe you do that as a child, what you learn is that the more you give, the more that comes back to you <clears throat> and getting that balance. July the, the um, so that's July the 13th. Um, oh, July the 13th, Mercury goes into Leo's too. This is words of love. So words of what we're happy and creative and passionate about. Uh, <clears throat> and July the 15th, we've got a fun night. This is uh, a Friday night. This is the moon is in Sag and it's trining Venus. And we've got sun square Uranus and Mercury can join Venus. Whoa, just go, just go out. Make sure that you're having a fun night out that night. And um, this continues with another Friday, July the 22nd. The sun moves into Leo and this is where fun starts. Because Leo is about fun, it's romance, it's vacation, it's holiday, it's working out at the gym. It's all sports and recreation. And it's your children, spending time with children and a love of children. Friday the 22nd, Mars, um, the moon is in Pisces again, like it is today. And the 23rd is going to be conjoining Neptune. Don't drink too much. Go out to the movies. This is always a dreamy time. I love going to the movies when Neptune is really strong. And people with a strong Neptune love the movies. The 24th through the 25th of uh, July, we've got uh, the moon in Aries. And um, this is a really nice time too. A long weekend. Take off Monday because Monday the moon's going to be in Aries. And... Uh, there's going to be a trine with Venus. This is just get active fun with your partner if you can. Mars, um, let me see here. I'm trying to read. Oh, Mars goes into Sagittarius. This is August the 2nd. So this is a great time. Energetic, sexy time for Sagittarians. Energetic though to push forward with things that you want to accomplish. August the 3rd, here's another hump day. The moon's in Leo. And... Um, We've got Venus there too. So this is a beautiful, beautiful, another beautiful Wednesday out. Venus goes into Virgo on August the 5th. So for Virgos, Virgo risings and Pisces, this is an uplifting and good time for you. August 13th and the 14th, Venus Sag, um, in Saturn. This is a, you know, a deepening of, of your caring here. Venus Neptune is full at this time. August the 14th is that full phase that I was talking to you about. Because on March the 20th, Venus met with Neptune. Whatever things that you, you put out onto your dream board then, or your wishes, they're coming true. The rose-colored glasses, that's Neptune as well. Don't be disappointed. Don't like, you know, think that there's just this, this romance that doesn't exist. Keep it practical, but use this romantic time to, to further connect. Um, I think it's it's probably worse for singles than it is for married people because the Neptune really brings out that romance, so you can get caught into the into the fantasy um, lane and be thinking that a partner is something that they're not. August the seventeenth, Venus trine Pluto. Whoa, this is a really nice time. So this is another hump day and um, a hump date, <laughs> a hump day. I love that. Full moon eclipse. We've got an eclipse too in Aquarius. So this is a big time for Leos at this time. And Aquarius is as well. Um, the eclipses are moving into those signs. And um, let's keep going here. We're going to finish up. August 23rd and 24th, Taurus. 20, the moon in Taurus. Love doing anything when the moon's in Taurus. It's phenomenal for eating out, for just enjoying sensual pleasure. The moon goes into Gemini and then... It's going to be trining Venus. Uh, Jupiter is going to be involved. So those, that's a nice time. August the 27th is a Saturday. Venus joins Jupiter. This is when magic happens, when Venus gets together with Jupiter. Then they unfold throughout the, the year. But <clears throat> this, is, this is, again, this is a new phase. So that Saturday, plan something special. August the 29th, so the Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So you can plan another long weekend here because... State your love. You've got we've got Mercury speaking with Venus. We've got Venus moving into Libra, and we've got 
uh, Mercury going retrograde. So there's some relationship stuff going on, relationship truth and understanding. And um, there's going to be an eclipse on September the 1st. So we've got so much going on. But So reach out to me at kk at kkastrology.com or info at kkastrology.com. Ask me about getting a specific Venus reading for yourself um, <clears throat> and or a synergy reading or relationship reading so we can do something specific to help you understand yourself at a deeper level. Have a fabulous rest of the weekend.